hey, this is John Reed, SID Tech 2015. Let's see if I can get this intro right second time through. <laughs> uh, last video of the day, but I've got a good one. I've got Tim Allen of Intel. How's it going? Great. And you guys had a very interesting role in, in Steve Lucas's keynote last night, which we're going to talk, you and your team, we're going to talk about that. Uh, you confessed to me that you're, you were a DBA, so you've got the hardcore tech background. Yeah, I've been a DBA. I've been a systems analysis developer. Yeah. I did all that in a previous life before I got to Intel. Yeah. So tell us the story of how this keynote appearance came about. It's essentially a proof of concept, but it's kind of a uh, forges new ground, I would say. Yeah. I'd, so when I think of the, the walk on that Pet Boombaum from Intel had with uh, John Appleby from Blueprint Technology. Right. Basically, what we looked at is we, we really wanted to do a, a, a big ass implementation of HANA and show how big it could scale. You know, in our manufacturing, we have tons of data. Right. When you think of a processor, just one pro Xeon processor has billions of transistors on it. Yeah. And yeah, I can remember back in the day when I was in engineering school and figuring out how those gates worked. But long and short of it is each transistor potentially could be a failure. Now, but that's just one processor. And then you look at the silicon. Yeah. On a piece of silicon, there's hundreds of processors as it goes through and gets manufactured. So, but then you add that and multiply it by hundreds of millions of processors that are manufactured each year, yeah. you have a big data set all of a sudden. Suddenly you're in petabytes, right? Exactly. Which is uncharted territory for, for productive HANA systems, per yep. se. So yeah. we wanted to take that data yeah. and then scale it in, in this data tiered mechanism of, of right. hot, warm, and cold data. Right. And this dynamic tiering is, is a new aspect to how to manage a HANA system. So you guys were uh, forging new ground there as well. Exactly. So when you think of data tiering, and when you think of HANA, most people just think, oh, it's in memory, just run everything in memory. Right. Well, we also wanted to leverage and promote in other Intel technologies beyond processors, solid state drive. Sure. So when you look at the different tiers. Besides, if you want to run all that in memory, even if you could, it's going to cost you so much money. You start to lose yeah, the Yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. your memory is really the biggest cost. Exactly. And your people, obviously. Yeah. So it's a big sunk cost. Yeah. So if you look at the data tiering, specifically where Intel on the different software was, you know, obviously HANA was the hot right. in memory. At the warm level, what you had is you had SAP DT, for formerly known as SAP IQ. Right. And that was on solid state drives. But then there was also this portion of you know, the data lake, or as Cloudera calls it, the data hub. Right. And that was basically on spinning drives. Right. And, but that also was a test bed for the new SAP HANA VORP. Right. Which is a way to manage between SAP and Hadoop, essentially, and to create more of an integrated sort of system between the two. Yeah, I think of it as, as OLAP and the Hadoop. Is right. How I think of it. Yeah. And the other piece of what you're doing that's significant is you weren't just proving a point around petabytes and warm and cold. You also wanted to be able to incorporate new external data, essentially, right? That was a big piece of it as well. You wanted to show you could pull that data in. Yep. Which you're able so to yeah, do. it was a it was a combination of not just this this data a right. manufacturing process, but yeah. also the the whole you know the big data portion of it as you you mentioned. It. Yeah, and tell us about the response times. Those are you guys mentioned those on stage, but for those who for some stupid reason missed your keynote, uh, how did you do? You went from forty five minutes down to what? To fourteen seconds. Okay, that's fairly significant, I'd say. So can you think of how that would uh, then apply not just to a live data set, but the future? Right. Yeah, how would that work? So when I think of it, I think of it as a predictive thing. So you have these millions of processors that you manufacture every year right. with billions of transistors. Right. And you know, obviously that's quickly trillions of rows. And to do that in 14 seconds, that gives you the ability to hopefully predict what's going to happen next time. So instead of looking at it from a transactional history, you can look into the future and hopefully minimize the number of errors that happen in the manufacturing process. Right. So I can see how this could apply not just to manufacturing. It could 
apply to multiple inter industries, whether it be retail, whether it be healthcare, lots of inter industries could, ha could uh, use this use case. Right. And the other interesting thing is that this proof of concept that you did, uh, which might have some internal use eventually, you'll decide that later, it's also a model for other customers to learn from, right? Uh, absolutely. Tell us about that, what you think we should do. So, you know, I, when I think of uh, big data, I, I think of an example of, of, of healthcare as an example. And, you know, I've had, I have a couple kids, and fortunately none of my kids have been so sick that uh, they've had to be in the neonatal care. And I've seen big data scenarios where, you know, they have all this good hardware there collecting data, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, a lot of them are just throwing it away. So they have all these sensors on these babies to make sure these babies are healthy. So I could see in healthcare, you know, that, that could also be a predictive scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, once they get data of other babies that have recovered and gained enough weight to be healthy, I could see them predict what, what's mm -hmm. the best tri treatment mm -hmm. to get each individual child healthy. Right. right, and they might be able to pull some data from uh, cold, a cold store, if you will, or you might be able to pull some additional reference information that you weren't able to pull in before, as well as the real time of whatever's in your hospital at the time. Yep. So, yeah, and healthcare is timely because that's one of the themes of tech ed. So good job there, keeping things on topic. You're welcome. Thanks for sharing the story behind the keynote. You heard it here first, folks. That's what really happened. Thank you for joining us. Somewhere out there, John Appleby is smiling, I'm sure. So before we go, though, I did want to mention yeah. kind of future looking. Oh, yeah, you have one more piece of the future, right? Yeah, yeah so when that. I think of SAP HANA, uh, obviously, the Xeon E7 V3 processor is kind of the core. Yeah. Uh, specifically, we've been developing with SAP for the last 10 plus years on SAP HANA. And one thing that recently just came out was the transaction improvement between generation up to 6x performance gain. Okay. Now, looking forward, though, we continue to work with SAP. And one technology that we're releasing soon is called the 3D crosspoint technology. Oh, yes. So back to your point on the different levels of data tiering, I could see the 3D cross crosspoint technology helping with NVMe at the warm level. And basically what I envision happening there is it could drive the cost of in memory, it could drive the cost down significantly. So basically, in summary, you'd be getting SAP in, in memory at a cold price. Yeah. Driving costs down, what's not to like? Yeah, I think everybody likes that. Well, thanks for joining us today, appreciate it. You're welcome.